And joining us live via Skype is a medical practitioner, Dr. Chukuma Ibrahim Igwe, to talk again more about the reality of COVID-19. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, live. And good to have you this morning. How are things in the UK? Uh, do you feel the preventive measures are effective compared to UK and our reality in Nigeria? Well, it's very difficult. It's very difficult with this, uh, this kind of um, epidemic or pandemic to know when things are working. Right. Um, the UK measures were toughened um, up about, uh, I think, two weeks ago. And since then, the whole country has been in lockdown. We are only beginning to see the effects of, of that. That's in terms of new cases coming through. Because when you um, implement these measures, uh, the main thing you're looking for is to stop infection running around the community and once you stop the infection uh, in the hospital we start getting less people and hopefully um, a few weeks down the line we start having less deaths so at the moment we think it's working there are signs that it's working so well if you compare their efforts with us here um, do you think we are doing good enough in nigeria precisely um, I, I think um, it's a very difficult comparison to make because nigeria is a, a different um, a different path in the curve, so to say. Nigeria has had, I heard you say, 274 cases. Right. And uh, over here in the UK, if you look at the confirmed cases, um, you're talking about uh, many multiples of tens of thousands um, of cases here in the UK. So um, different, different kettle of fish. So I think Nigeria has done what it should do, which is stopping people coming in and restricting movement within its borders. Um, and I'm um, um, applying and trying to advise the social distancing rules. So it's a difficult one, but I think they are doing what they can. Mm -hmm. Now that you've mentioned social distancing, help the average man or woman you know, understand how social distancing will slow down infection and how it can be best practiced given the situation. Yeah. So the thing about this virus is that we know very well now that um, if you're sick and you are talking like I'm doing to you and you're in front of me, you can, you might be able to kind of either um, smell my breath or feel some saliva come from my mouth. This virus is easily passed across in this particular manner. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not symptomatic, you can pass this virus even with those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And so with social distancing measures, if you keep very far away from people, um, then it's very unlikely that you're able to um, pass the virus in that particular way. The other way is um, when you have droplets on materials um, on, the, on the table or on surfaces and things, and people touch them, and if they don't wash their hands and they touch their face, then, of course, that again spreads the virus. So, yeah, so social distancing stops you from either giving it to somebody else or somebody else getting it from you. It minimizes the risk. Hmm. We also hear that the virus is mutating. Uh, um, is that something to be worried about? Uh, what are they? If uh, you know, what impact would that have in the coming days or weeks, as it is? Yeah, yeah. Viruses. All viruses mutate. I mean, this this is an RNA virus, which means it has a single strand of a, a, a messenger um, um, RNA segment, and um, um, and it makes mistakes as it tries to multiply, but it cannot correct those mistakes. So every time it makes a mistake, we we'll call that a mutation. So that's natural for a virus. But when it, when it mutates, um, uh, the ones that keep on lasting are the ones that will, um, the ones that are easily passed along. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be less virulent, which is more likely, or a more virulent form. At the moment, it's not mutated in a way uh, to create too much of a concern. Um, for us, but it, it, it's mutating like any other cold, common cold virus. It mutates like this every other, I think, two weeks or something like that. It kind of changes slightly. Mm. All right. Are there any patterns gleaned so far that show us, you know, the way forward in combating COVID-19 generally? Um, the, the main thing we found is that it's actually a very old lesson that when it comes to pandemics and epidemics like this, that um, even with all the advanced knowledge we have today, uh, one of the oldest ones is the one that is very effective, which is um, the social distancing measures that are in place now. Um, these viruses, this virus, it doesn't have a wing, it doesn't have hands, it doesn't have legs. It's human beings that pass it on. So um, if human beings stop interacting, it will stop in its track and um, it will stop replicating. So that is the most effective um, thing we have. There are other things we are looking at. Um, uh, we are looking at uh, measures to try and treat but there's no drug, there's no magic bullet in place at the moment. These are, these are all in trial. Mm -hmm. And then finally, 
the final thing is um, immunity. So um, a herd immunity of some form is going to be very useful to be able to get us out of this pandemic. Um, and that will come by natural exposure or because we get a vaccine. And as you know, a vaccine is not um, available for at least another year. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, Dr. Chukuma Igwe, for joining us on News on the Hour this morning. Thank you. Thank you.